Are you frustrated and defeated after every job interview? Wondering why you're not getting past the first round? Putting in a lot of effort with no results to show? Don't worry, I have the answers you're looking for. I'm Chris and I've been hiring UX designers since 2015. Over the years, I've probably interviewed hundreds, if not thousands of designers. In this video, I'll show how to ace your next UX interview with these six actionable steps. And as a bonus, I'll give you tips in dealing with rejection. Stick around till the end. Let's get into it. First, let's tackle the problem with most UX interviews. If you're struggling with getting past the first round of interviews, I would approach it like a UX problem. So it'd be like, well, what do the interviewers want first? Like, wh what are they looking for? What are the measures of success that gets you through to the second round? So, like, it's not completely your fault, okay? Just know that as well. Because UX interview is really weird, right? Like, I don't know how many engineering friends you have, but their interviews is really, uh, simple. The way they outline it is really simple. Either it's a culture fit interview, then it's a technical test. And the good thing about technical interviews from the engineering side or engineering interviews is they tell you what they want, right? Hey, we want you to produce an algorithm to solve this. We're going to analyze you based on this. But for design, it's completely different because they don't necessarily think that design is you know, a technical capability or whatever the thing is, but it's not really controlled and written by designers, like the interview process. But for engineers, it really is. That's why there's like a bunch of like recruiters, HRs, and they, they judge you based on what they know about design or what they think they know about design. So maybe that, that's also one reason why you're not, you know, progressing, right? So it's not completely your fault. And that's just a problem with the industry in general. The second thing I can say about this is, I'll tell you about my experience of um, phone interviews. So we set up phone interviews in the organizations that I've run, because one, I'm in Vietnam or in Asia, or I'm in Mexico. So we always test the candidate on English skills, right? In the US, I'm not sure how much they do that, but that's the first thing. And then we provide questions to the recruiter to ask. It really depends on how familiar the recruiter is to it, but it's really a, a real general thing. So they'll ask you about your design projects. Can you speak about it? And you know, really general stuff. They're not really super qualified to sort of give you the green light. So they just really want to hear you say the right stuff, which is typically your design process, what you learned, what would you do differently? Can you tell me where you made these decisions and why? So it should be the easier stage. Here are some actual tips that you could follow. Practice with real or mock interviews. Yeah, what, one of the things, if you're nervous for the interview, then um, obviously practice makes perfect, but having, you know, sticking the answers that you might receive next to your wall or whatever you're taking the interview, that helps. But remember, you can never prepare and you never know exactly what they ask, right? So I think embracing that chaos is also good. And the best interviews that I ever do are ones that I don't really care about. So I have this really weird habit of like every three to six months, just do job interviews after job interviews, even if I don't want the job, because it puts you kind of in that practice. So I would say you should do that too, right? So. What you should be doing is like doing a lot of interviews, just get as many interviews as you want, even if you don't want it. So it filters out good questions and it basically puts you in the space of, I know how to deal with the questions because in my head, I have answered like this three or four times already, right? So you can do this with companies in Nigeria or Africa or, you know, companies that you kind of aren't super interested, but it's good practice for you, right? And then, you know, the US company, would be the goal, right? Like if, if you can get a job, move over to the US, that, that would be the best sort of thing, or even to work remote. But you could also do the mock interviews on ADP lists, right? There's plenty of, you know, local people on ADP lists that could help you, you know, similar time zones and stuff that could do mock interviews. You know, the more you do, the better you are. And um, the more surprising questions they throw at you, also the better you will be to think on your feet, right? Talk about what you want to talk about. I wrote down the common problems I see on design teams and then I map that to what I've done before to try and solve those problems or at least ideas and I've said here's what I see that is a common thing that I see all the time and here's how I would go about solving it. Maybe it's too deep for the first interview but really what you want to do is impress them right. So even sometimes when they ask you some sort of questions and you don't really know, you can talk about what you want to talk about. <laughs> it's absolutely fine. 
Remember, these are recruiters. All they want is like, you know, is this person like excited? Are they capable of like kind of speaking about design? Are they passionate? All the, uh, you know, are they smart? So they're, so they're not really judging you on specific design knowledge. What they're judging you probably is like, does this person sound like someone I want to work with? Can they speak in an eloquent way or, or whatever? So it's okay not to answer their questions. I think a lot of people do that. And you can just talk about what you want to talk about, right? Things that excite you. Yeah. Reflect on the past. I've been applying to like head of design jobs and I basically have a document of what value I bring to the company. So I think you should do that too. So think about your career, think about where you are, okay? And clearly write down what you wanna do, where you wanna be. Let's just say you wanna be an expert um, in product design. You don't wanna be a specialist, you wanna be a generalist. Or you're really fascinated with um, user research or you know, something you wanna learn more about and, and delve into where you are in your career now. But also, your achievements in the past at your company or what you've done that says, I think I did really good at here and I believe I can transition that value to your company, right? Um, I, I think that's a good practice as well. Ask for feedback at the end of the interview. So one thing is, that I like to do, and not sure everybody likes to do this, but I like to do it anyway. I actually ask at the at the end of the interview, I'm like, so did you guys have any feedback from me? You know, how did that go in your perspective? And so that will basically kill the doubt that you had in your head, right? If they didn't like it, hopefully they give you some good feedback. If they did like it, uh, then great, let's move on. But just for your own sanity, ask that question. I think I appreciate it when people ask that, because I'm like, oh, look at the balls on this guy. Let's go, right? That's always good. Send a follow-up. You should probably send a uh, follow-up. You should always send follow-ups. Uh, why do we do this? We send follow-ups to say thank you for your time, first. Second is we say not only thank you for your time, but we appreciate that you sat down and spoke to us to show you're enthusiastic, right? To show you actually want this job. So it could be two lines in an email. It doesn't have to be this cover letter of like, this is my destiny. Clearly it isn't, right? But you can just say simply, thank you for your time. I really enjoyed it. Uh, if there's any other questions you want me to ask, feel free to ping me and just be open. And if you did f up, let's just say they asked you, where do you want to be in five years, Emmanuel? And then, and then you say, ah, oh, I don't actually know. Then you can address that in the follow-up. You can say, oh, that question kind of caught me by surprise, but here's my short, concise answer, right? You, you can address that. And then what that does to interviewers is say, oh, this person is actually not as bad as I thought or I have warm feelings because they reached out directly after, right? Do it within one or two hours uh, as it's fresh in your head and just kind of be like, look, because when you wait for someone, you're already nervous, right? So how do you address that by acting first, by saying, okay, I'm just gonna do what I can to close this deal. But then after that, you can't do anything, right? So uh, address those feelings straight away. If you didn't think it went well, even if it did go well, you should still address what you thought about it and just kind of move on. Remember, you're taking five minutes to write that email, but the chances of you going through, uh, the probability will be higher after that. As promised, here are the bonus. What if you didn't understand the question you were being asked in the interview? So if you didn't understand the question, basically what you just asked me, right? I said, what do you mean? And it's just, it's, it's, um, it's a mechanism for clarifying, right? So it, it doesn't, you don't have to, you don't have to be, perfect, they're not looking for the perfect person, they're just looking for the, the person that's perfect for the role, right? They're looking for real humans. So if you end up writing these cookie cutter answers, likely you won't get hired. Really, they wanna know who you are and, and what you're passionate about, right? They wanna see the potential, right? And, and that's what all good hiring processes kind of filter out. So don't be too worried about that. Really, it's just nervousness, right? It really is just about, can you talk about what you work on in a concise manner? And you know, are you enthusiastic? Have you done some research on the company? Do you, do you know what they're talking about uh, or working on? And yeah, the first stage should be the easiest, but if you knock off some of the items that I mentioned, I believe your chances of success is, is a little bit higher. And finally, what do you do when you get rejected? Sometimes when they reject you and you get these rejection letters, it weighs you down. And I think that's super normal, right? Like, because you had such high hopes or, you, you know, everybody wants to sort of be like accepted or validated through some sort of recognition. Um, but this is 
the hiring process, right? You gotta do it a million times so you grow thick skin and that you can kind of approach every situation like that. You know, uh, whether it's selling your product online, interviewing on a job, or even dating, right? You gotta grow thick skin, man, otherwise you're not gonna get the girl, right? You're not gonna sell the product and you won't get the job. This is what it is, right? When you go up to a girl at a bar, if she says no, do you move on to the next one or do you still try? Either way, people do different things, but I'm saying to you that trying again is probably better. And then if it still doesn't work, then move on, right? This is the whole courting sort of thing with, with hiring processes. There's probably only a couple of companies in the world that you should really work for as a designer, right? And the ones that you apply to, I'm guessing are probably not those companies. So it doesn't matter at the end of the day, right? So, you know, the best ones are like your Google, your Apple, your Airbnb, your sort of like these creative agencies out there. But literally there's probably 10 in the world. But how many jobs are there? There's, there's hundreds of thousands of jobs. So don't be super upset. If it doesn't work out, it just doesn't work out. And, and that might be for the better for something else, right? I always get upset as well when I don't get it because I want to get it because getting it feels good, but not necessarily is it the best career decision as well. Let's just say both companies offer you a position. Which one are you going to choose? You're going to have to re reject one of them, right? So it's the same sort of concept. So yeah. If you need UX mentorship, let's jump on a call. Link in the description. Or you can hit the big red button. Bye.